Uh, thank you all for joining us here today. My name is Yasmin Hussein, and I am a second year MA student here in Gallatin. My concentration is development, gender, and policy. As a Gallatin Human Rights Fellow, I have spent an entire semester learning and understanding about the theories and field of human rights. I learned that although there is an array of theories, frameworks, and approaches to studying and understanding human rights, at times these theories conflict with one another and criticize one another. But there was always one common thread of understanding among proponents of human rights around the world. And that is that every human being on this earth has the right to life. Regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, or sex, every human being has the right to life a right that should not be debated or argued. Which is why I will be using my time today to talk about something else other than my work over the summer. And if I have some time, then I will brief you all. As I stand in front of you right now, there is an entire population that is being denied their right to life. They are imprisoned with no access to food, electricity, or water. They are being denied access to international aid, all while experiencing a constant barrage of bombing with no option to flee. With no option to flee, they're almost certain death. Now, if this population had been any other than the Palestinian population, I am sure there would be no need for this speech. There would be no need for anyone to convince the world that what is and has been happening to the Palestinian people is ethnic cleansing and genocide but it largely happens that these people are Arabs and largely Muslim. Hence, the world seems to care a lot less for their rights. It is our responsibility as students of NYU to hold the administration of this university accountable. And part of that responsibility is to call out NYU for, for failing to send out a statement condemning the genocide that is currently taking place by the apartheid state of Israel. While many institutions, including NYU, sent out statements condemning the actions of Hamas, they have remained extremely silent on what is currently happening to the people of Palestine. I have yet to see a statement by NYU condemning the hateful speech being used against Palestinians, Arabs, and Muslims these past few weeks. Hateful speech that has led to the fatal stabbing of a six-year-old Muslim child in Chicago just a few days ago. This really makes me wonder how deep does the resentment run? How deep are the roots of the selective apathy? But then again, the death of 2,329 Palestinian people, of whom 600 are children, in the last week did not raise any concerns. It did not generate a heartfelt statement by NYU, nor did it dominate the media and news. Which again does not seem surprising, as the death of 6,407 Palestinians since 2008 also did not raise any alarms. Instead, NYU students are facing extreme backlash for promoting human rights and speaking out against the genocide of Palestinians. Students are afraid of speaking up against these human rights violations. They are fearful for their futures and even their lives. The message NYU is sending out to us as their, as their students is clear and dangerous. Some lives are apparently worth more than others. I urge NYU to not let this institution become an unsafe space for Muslim or Arab students or any student that declares their stance to be pro-human rights or pro-Palestine in these times. I also urge NYU to take a stance against genocide and eth the genocide and ethnic cleaning. Sorry, I apologize. I also urge NYU to take a stance against the genocide and ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people. Finally, I would like to clarify that this statement represents my views only. Thank you. May I get a time check on how much time I have left? <coughs> Two minutes. Okay, then I will briefly also uh, present my project for this summer. Thank you. Um, I had the amazing opportunity to intern with Cairo 52 over the summer and work on the visibility of sex workers in Egypt. Cairo 52 is a human rights organization that works on promoting uh, human rights for marginalized communities, specifically sex workers and members of the LGBTQ plus community. Why did I decide to work on this specific project? Well, for a number of reasons. Initially, there is an extreme lack of data around sex workers in Egypt. If anyone decides to Google sex workers in Egypt, they will find the latest article to be dating back five to seven years. And this begs a question, as a lot of people in the room are academics or are students themselves, they know that sometimes a lack of data is actually is actually a reason to question, and the lack of data is 
intended, so it's not out of the blue. Another thing is that this is an extremely vulnerable population that has been actually increasing in the recent years due to the declining economic situation in Egypt. As we all know, when the economic situation of a country or society worsens, usually the percentage or number of sex workers tends to increase. But again, we have almost no data around this population. Specifically, I was working on understanding the social and legal conditions around sex workers and their impl impl implementation, as well as state behavior towards sex workers. So the only data that we have around sex workers and the state has to do with the cases that the state brings against sex workers, and most of the time, these cases are written by the police, which means that the only data we have around sex workers is extremely biased data, and we have no way of verifying if that data is actually accurate from the perspective of alleged sex workers. Thank you. So how was I able, or how did I try to tackle this question of the visibility of sex workers in Egypt? I interned with Cairo 52, I visited Egypt during the summer, and I tried to study the locations and environments of sex workers, which was extremely difficult. As we all know, sex work is an extremely sensitive topic globally, but even more so in Egypt. People are uh, scrutinized for talking or studying the subject from any other perspective besides it being just a case uh, or a healthcare issue in terms of HIV and providing just better health conditions for sex workers, but it's never tackled from a social and political perspective. And through Cairo 52, I had the chance to study a number of court cases from alleged sex workers or from the state towards alleged sex workers. And this is an example of what the case is blurred out. So outcomes and insights. Um, my thesis will be focusing on this subject. I am also working with Cairo 52 to publish a legal excerpt on the patterns that are present in cases that deal with sex workers from the state, as well as working on creating insights in the next UPR report uh, from Egypt uh, for 2024, specifically focusing on recommendations that Cairo 52 can make to uh, can make in the UPR report on recommendations the state should abide by when it comes to sex workers. And finally, I really aim and hope to be able to do more field work in Egypt and hopefully be able to survey and analyze more uh, the environment and conditions of female sex workers in Egypt.